History of Ukraine Account of Past Events in the Region of Modern Ukraine Prehistoric Ukraine, as part of the Pontic Steppe, played an important role in Eurasian cultural contacts, including the spread of the Chalcolithic, the Bronze Age, Indo-European expansion and the domestication of the horse. Part of Scythia in antiquity and settled by Gete, in the migration period, Ukraine is also the site of early Slavic expansion, and enters history proper with the establishment of the medieval state of Kievan Rus, which emerged as a powerful nation in the Middle Ages but disintegrated in the 12th century. After the middle of the 14th century, present-day Ukrainian territories came under the rule of three external powers. The Golden Horde the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland, during the 15th century these lands came under the rule of the Crown of the Kingdom of Poland, then of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, from 1569. The Crimean Khanate, from the 15th century, after a 1648 rebellion of the Cossacks against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Hetman Boden Komelnitsky agreed to the Treaty of Pereyaslav in January 1654. The exact nature of the relationship established by this treaty between Cossack Hetmanate and Russia remains a matter of scholarly controversy. The agreement precipitated the Russo-Polish War of 1654-67. In consequence, by the Eternal Peace Treaty, signed in 1686, the eastern portion of Ukraine, east of the Dnieper River, were to come under Russian rule, 146,000 rubles were to be paid to Poland as compensation for the loss of the right bank of Ukraine and the parties agreed not to sign a separate treaty with the Ottoman Empire. The treaty was strongly opposed in Poland and was not ratified by the same Parliament of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth until 1710. The legal legitimacy of its ratification has been disputed. According to Jacek Staszewski, the treaty was not confirmed by a resolution of the same until the convocation same, 1764. After the partitions of Poland, 1772-1795, and the Russian conquest of the Crimean Khanate, the Russian Empire and Habsburg Austria were in control of all the territories that constitute present-day Ukraine for a hundred years. A chaotic period of warfare ensued after the Russian revolutions of 1917. The partially recognized Ukrainian People's Republic emerged from its own civil war of 1917 to 1921. The Ukrainian Soviet War, 1917 to 1921, followed, in which the Bolshevik Red Army established control in late 1919. The Ukrainian Bolsheviks, who had defeated the national government in Kiev, established the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, which on 30 December 1922 became one of the founding republics of the Soviet Union. Initial Soviet policy on Ukrainian language and Ukrainian culture made Ukrainian the official language of administration in schools. Policy in the 1930s turned to Russification. In 1932 and 1933, millions of people, mostly peasants, in Ukraine starved to death in a devastating famine, known as Holodomor, it is estimated by Encyclopedia Britannica that 6 to 8 million people died from hunger in the Soviet Union during this period, of whom 4 to 5 million were Ukrainians. Nikita Khrushchev was appointed the head of the Ukrainian Communist Party in 1938. After Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union invaded Poland in September 1939, the Ukrainian SSR's territory expanded westward. Axis armies occupied Ukraine from 1941 to 1944. During World War II the Ukrainian insurgent army fought for Ukrainian independence against both Germany and the Soviet Union. In 1945 the Ukrainian SSR became one of the founding members of the United Nations. After the death of Stalin, 1953, the Ukrainian Khrushchev as head of the Communist Party of Soviet Union enabled a Ukrainian revival, and in 1954 the Republic expanded to the south with the transfer of Crimea from Russia. Nevertheless, political repressions against poets, historians and other intellectuals continued, as in all other parts of the USSR. Ukraine became independent again when the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991. This started a period of transition to a market economy, in which Ukraine suffered an eight-year recession. Subsequently, however, the economy experienced a high increase in GDP growth. Ukraine was caught up in the worldwide economic crisis in 2008 and the economy plunged. GDP fell 20% from spring 2008 to spring 2009, then leveled off. 
The prolonged crisis began on 21 November 2013, when then-President Viktor Yanukovych suspended preparations for the implementation of an association agreement with the European Union. This decision resulted in mass protests by pro-Europeans, events which became known as the Euromaidan, or the Revolution of Dignity. A referendum in the largely ethnic Russian Ukrainian autonomous region of Crimea was held and Crimea was de facto annexed by Russia on 18 March 2014. The war in Donbass started in Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts of Ukraine involving pro-Ukrainian and pro-Russian Ukrainians and Russian mercenaries. The crisis negatively influenced the Ukrainian economy. On 24 February 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion of the country. Prehistory see also, Ukrainian stone stele archaeological cultures associated with Proto-Slavs and Early Slavs, Chernol's culture, before 500 BC, Zurubintsi culture, 300 BC to AD 100, Przeworsk culture, 300 BC to AD 400, Prague Korchuk horizon, 6th to 7th century, Slavic expansion. Settlement in Ukraine by members of the genus Homo has been documented into distant prehistory. The Neanderthals are associated with the Moldova archaeological sites, 45,000 to 43,000 BC, which include a mammoth bone dwelling. Gravettian settlements dating to 32,000 BC have been unearthed and studied in the Buran Kaya cave site of the Crimean Mountains. Around 90,000 years ago the West Siberian rivers were blocked by an ice sheet and emptied via the Aral Lake, Caspian Sea, and the Manage Basin into the Black Sea, thus forming a kind of worldwide longest river. Extent of the Chalcolithic Yamna or Pit Grave Culture, 3rd millennium BC In the late Neolithic times the Kukutani Tripilian culture flourished from about 4,500 to 3,000 BC. The Copper Age people of the Kukutani Tripilian culture resided in the western part, and the Sredni Stog culture further east, succeeded by the early Bronze Age Yamna, Kurgan, culture of the steppes, and by the catacomb culture in the 3rd millennium BC. History Main Articles Bosporan Kingdom, Greeks in pre-Roman Crimea, and Roman Crimea during the Iron Age, these peoples were followed by the Dacians as well as nomadic peoples like the Sumerians, archaeological Novarkosk culture, Scythians and Sarmatians. The Scythian kingdom existed here from 750 to 250 BC along with other ancient Greek colonies founded in the 6th century BC on the northeastern shore of the Black Sea. The colonies of Tyras, Albia, Hermanasa continued as Roman and Byzantine cities until the 6th century AD. In the 3rd century AD, the Goths arrived in the lands of modern Ukraine around 250 to 375 AD, which they called Aryan, corresponding to the archaeological Trinitat culture. The Ostrogoths stayed in the area that came under the sway of the Huns from the 370s. North of the Ostrogothic kingdom was the Kiev culture, flourishing from the 2nd and 5th centuries, when it was also overrun by the Huns. After they helped defeat the Huns at the Battle of Nidau in 454, the Ostrogoths were allowed by the Romans to settle in Pannonia. A Greek fresco depicting the goddess Demeter, from Panticopium in the ancient Bosporan kingdom, a client state of the Roman Empire, 1st century AD, Crimea. With the power vacuum created with the end of Hunnic and Gothic rule, Slavic tribes, possibly emerging from the remnants of the Kiev culture, began to expand over much of the territory that is now Ukraine during the 5th century, and beyond to the Balkans from the 6th century. In the 7th century, the territory of modern Ukraine was the core of the state of the Bulgars, often referred to as Old Great Bulgaria, with its capital city of Phanagoria. At the end of the 7th century, most Bulgar tribes migrated in several directions and the remains of their state were absorbed by the Khazars, a semi-nomadic people from Central Asia. The Khazars founded the Hazar Kingdom near the Caspian Sea in the Caucasus. The kingdom included western Kazakhstan and parts of Crimea, eastern Ukraine, southern Russia and Azerbaijan. Around 800 AD, the kingdom converted to Judaism. Antes people in the 5th and 6th centuries, the Antes Union was located in the territory of what is now Ukraine. The Antes were the ancestors of Ukrainians, White Croats, Severians, Polans, Drevlians, Dulebs, Ulykians, and Tavarians. Migrations from Ukraine throughout the Balkans established many South Slavic nations. Northern migrations, reaching almost to the Lake Ilmen, led to the emergence of the Ilmen Slavs, Krivichas, and Radomichas, the groups ancestral to the Russians. After an Avar raid in 602 and the collapse of the Antes Union, 
Most of these people survived as separate tribes until the beginning of the second millennium. Middle Ages Kievan Rus main article, Kievan Rus overseas guests by Nicholas Rarick, 1901 as Mikhailo Hrusheski states, the city of Kiev was established during the time when the area around the Mid and Low Dnieper was part of the Hazar state. He derived that information from local legends because no written chronicles from that period are left. Citation needed. In 882, Kiev was conquered from the Khazars by the Varangian noble Ole, Oleg, who started the long period of rule of the Rurikid princes. During this time, several Slavic tribes were native to Ukraine, including the Polans, the Drevlians, the Severians, the Uliks, the Tavarians, the White Croats and the Dulebs. Situated on lucrative trade routes, Kiev among the Polans quickly prospered as the center of the powerful Slavic state of Kievan Rus. Kievan Rus including the territory of current-day Ukraine, last 20 years of the state, 1220 to 1240, in 941 AD, the Prince of Kiev invaded the Byzantine Empire but was defeated in the Rus-Byzantine War, 941. In the 11th century, Kievan Rus was geographically the largest state in Europe, becoming known in the rest of Europe as Ruthenia, the Latin name for Rus, especially for Western principalities of Rus after the Mongol invasion. The name, Ukraine, meaning, inland, or, native land, usually interpreted as, borderland, first appears in historical documents of the 12th century and then on history maps of the 16th century period. This term seems to have been synonymous with the land of Rus propria, the principalities of Kiev, Chernihiv and Pariaslav. The term, Greater Rus, was used to apply to all the lands of the entire Kievan Rus, including those that were not just Slavic, but also Uralic in the northeast portions of the state. Local regional subdivisions of Rus appeared in the Slavic heartland, including, Belarus, White Russia, Korna Rus, Black Russia, and, Shervan, Rus, Red Russia, in northwestern and western Ukraine. Christianity Main Article. History of Christianity in Ukraine The Baptism of Princess Olha in Constantinople. A miniature from the Radziwill Chronicle. While Christianity had made headway into the territory of modern Ukraine before the First Ecumenical Council, the Council of Nicaea, 325, particularly along the Black Sea coast, and, in western Ukraine during the time of the Empire of Great Moravia, the formal governmental acceptance of Christianity in Rus occurred in 988. The major promoter of the Christianization of Kievan Rus was the Grand Duke Vladimir the Great, Volodymyr, his Christian interest was midwifed by his grandmother, Princess Olga. Later, an enduring part of the East Slavic legal tradition was set down by the Kievan ruler, Yaroslav I, who promulgated the Ruskaya Pravda, Truth of Rus, which endured through the Lithuanian period of Rus. Conflict among the various principalities of Rus, in spite of the efforts of Grand Prince Vladimir Monomak, led to decline, beginning in the 12th century. In Rus propria, the Kiev region, the nascent Rus principalities of Halic and Volhynia extended their rule. In the north, the name of Moscow appeared in the historical record in the Principality of Suzdal, which gave rise to the nation of Russia. In the northwest, the Principality of Polotsk increasingly asserted the autonomy of Belarus. Kiev was sacked by the Principality of Vladimir, 1169, in the power struggle between princes and later by Cuman and Mongol raiders in the 12th and 13th centuries, respectively. Subsequently, all principalities of present-day Ukraine acknowledged dependence upon the Mongols, 1239 to 1240. In 1240, the Mongols sacked Kiev, and many people fled to other countries. Five years after the fall of Kiev, the papal envoy Giovanni da Pian del Carpine wrote, they destroyed cities and castles and killed men in Kiev, which is the greatest Russian city they besieged, and when they had besieged it a long while they took it and killed the people of the city. So when we went through that country we found countless human skulls and bones from the dead scattered over the field. Indeed it had been a very great and populous city and now is reduced almost to nothing. In fact there are hardly 200 houses there now and the people are held in the strictest servitude. Galicia Volhynia The Galician Volhynian Kingdom in the 13th-14th century's main article, Galicia Volhynia a successor state to the Kievan Rus on part of the territory of today's Ukraine was the Principality of Galicia Volhynia. Previously, Vladimir the Great had established the cities of Halic and Latimir as regional capitals. 
This state was based upon the Dulib, Tiverian and White Croat tribes. The state was ruled by the descendants of Yaroslav the Wise and Vladimir Monomag. For a brief period, the state was ruled by a Hungarian nobleman. Battles with the neighboring states of Poland and Lithuania also occurred, as well as internecine warfare with the independent Ruthenian principality of Chernihiv to the east. At its greatest extension the territory of Galicia Volhynia included later Wallachia, Bessarabia, thus reaching the shores of the Black Sea. During this period, around 1200 to 1400, each principality was independent of the other for a period. The state of Halic Volhynia eventually became a vassal to the Mongol Empire, but efforts to gain European support for opposition to the Mongols continued. This period marked the first King of Rus. Previously, the rulers of Rus were termed Grand Dukes or Princes. 14th century see also Golden Horde during the 14th century, Poland and Lithuania fought wars against the Mongol invaders, and eventually most of Ukraine passed to the rule of Poland and Lithuania. More particularly, the lands of Volhynia in the north and northwest passed to the rule of Lithuanian princes, while the southwest passed to the control of Poland, Galicia. Also the Genoese founded some colonies in Crimean coasts until the Ottoman conquest in the 1470s. Most of Ukraine bordered parts of Lithuania, and some say that the name, Ukraine, comes from the local word for, border, although the name, Ukraine, was also used centuries earlier and it is more likely that the name points towards the country's traditional production of grain. Lithuania took control of the state of Volhynia in northern and northwestern Ukraine, including the region around Kyiv, Rus, and the rulers of Lithuania then adopted the title of ruler of Rus. Despite that, many Ukrainians, then known as Ruthenians, were in high positions of power in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, comprising local rulers, gentry, and even the Lithuanian crown itself, see Algirdas and Dimitro Dedko. During this time, Ukraine and Ukrainians saw relative prosperity and autonomy, with the duchy functioning more like a joint Lithuanian-Ukrainian state, with freedom to practice Orthodox Christianity, speak Ukrainian, especially demonstrated by the significantly low linguistic overlap between the Ukrainian and Lithuanian languages, and continue to engage in Ukrainian culture practices, remaining unabated. Eventually, Poland took control of the southwestern region. Following the union between Poland and Lithuania, Poles, Germans, Lithuanians and Jews migrated to the region, forcing Ukrainians out of positions of power they shared with Lithuanians, with more Ukrainians being forced into central Ukraine as a result of Polish migration, colonization, and other forms of oppression against Ukraine and Ukrainians, all of which started to fully take form. In 1490, Due to increased oppression of Ukrainians at the hands of the Polish, a series of successful rebellions was led by Ukrainian hero Petro Muka, joined by other Ukrainians, such as early Cossacks and Hutsuls, in addition to Moldavians, Romanians, known as Muka's Rebellion, this series of battles was supported by the Moldavian Prince Stephen the Great, and it is one of the earliest known uprisings of Ukrainians against Polish oppression. These rebellions saw the capture of several cities of Pokutia, and reached as far west as Lviv, but without capturing the latter. The 15th century decline of the Golden Horde enabled the foundation of the Crimean Khanate, which occupied present-day Black Sea shores and southern steppes of Ukraine. Until the late 18th century, the Crimean Khanate maintained a massive slave trade with the Ottoman Empire in the Middle East exporting about 2 million slaves from Russia and Ukraine over the period 1500 to 1700. It remained a vassal state of the Ottoman Empire until 1774, when it was finally dissolved by the Russian Empire in 1783. Early Modern Period Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Kingdom of Poland after the Union of Lublin in 1569 and the formation of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Ukraine fell under Polish administration, becoming part of the crown of the Kingdom of Poland. The period immediately following the creation of the Commonwealth saw a huge revitalization in colonization efforts. Many new cities and villages were founded. Links between different Ukrainian regions, such as Galicia and Volyn were greatly extended. New schools spread the ideas of the Renaissance. Polish peasants arrived in great numbers and quickly became mixed with the local population. During this time, most of Ukrainian nobles became Polonized and converted to Catholicism, 
and while most Ruthenian-speaking peasants remained within the Eastern Orthodox Church, social tension rose. Ruthenian peasants who fled efforts to force them into serfdom came to be known as Cossacks and earned a reputation for their fierce martial spirit. Some Cossacks were enlisted by the Commonwealth as soldiers to protect the southeastern borders of Commonwealth from Tatars or took part in campaigns abroad, like Petro Konishevich Sahodikny in the Battle of Khotin 1621. Cossack units were also active in wars between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Tsardom of Russia. Despite the Cossacks' military usefulness, the Commonwealth, dominated by its nobility, refused to grant them any significant autonomy, instead attempting to turn most of the Cossack population into serfs. This led to an increasing number of Cossack rebellions aimed at the Commonwealth. More information Voivodeship, Square Kilometers, Cossack-era Zaporozhian Cossacks the Hetmanate in 1654, against the backdrop of contemporary Ukraine. See also, History of Cossacks the 1648 Ukrainian Cossack, Kozak, Rebellion or Komelnitsky Uprising, which started an era known as the Ruin, in Polish history as the Deluge, undermined the foundations and stability of the Commonwealth. The nascent Cossack state, the Cossack Hetmanate, usually viewed as precursor of Ukraine, found itself in a three-sided military and diplomatic rivalry with the Ottoman Turks, who controlled the Tatars to the south, the Commonwealth of Poland and Lithuania, and the Tsardom of Muscovy to the east. The Zaporizhian host, in order to leave the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, sought a treaty of protection with Russia in 1654. This agreement was known as the Treaty of Pereyaslav. Commonwealth authorities then sought compromise with the Ukrainian Cossack state by signing the Treaty of Hadiak in 1658, but, after 13 years of incessant warfare, the agreement was later superseded by 1667 Polish-Russian Treaty of Andrasovo, which divided Ukrainian territory between the Commonwealth and Russia. Under Russia, the Cossacks initially retained official autonomy in the Hetmanate, for a time, they also maintained a semi-independent republic in Zaporozhye, and a colony on the Russian frontier in Sloboda, Ukraine. In 1686, the Metropolitanate of Kyiv was annexed by the Moscow Patriarchate through the synodal letter of the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople Dionysus IV, later anathematized, who made a simony. Russian Empire and Austria-Hungary see also, partitions of Poland and Little Russia during subsequent decades, Tsarist rule over central Ukraine gradually replaced protection, sporadic Cossack uprisings were now aimed at the Russian authorities, but eventually petered out by the late 18th century, following the destruction of entire Cossack hosts. After the partitions of Poland in 1772, 1793 and 1795, the extreme west of Ukraine fell under the control of the Austrians, with the rest becoming a part of the Russian Empire. As a result of Russo-Turkish wars the Ottoman Empire's control receded from south-central Ukraine, while the rule of Hungary over the Transcarpathian region continued. Ukrainian writers and intellectuals were inspired by the nationalistic spirit stirring other European peoples existing under other imperial governments and became determined to revive the Ukrainian linguistic and cultural traditions and re-establish a Ukrainian nation-state, a movement that became known as Ukrainophilism. Russia, Fearing separatism, imposed strict limits on attempts to elevate the Ukrainian language and culture, even banning its use in study. The Russophile policies of Russification and Panslavism led to an exodus of a number of Ukrainian intellectuals into Western Ukraine. However, many Ukrainians accepted their fate in the Russian Empire and some were able to achieve a great success there. The fate of the Ukrainians was far different under the Austrian Empire where they found themselves in the pawn position of the Russian-Austrian power struggle for the Central and Southern Europe. Unlike in Russia, most of the elite that ruled Galicia were of Austrian or Polish descent, with the Ruthenians being almost exclusively kept in peasantry. During the 19th century, Russophilia was a common occurrence among the Slavic population, but the mass exodus of Ukrainian intellectuals escaping from Russian repression in eastern Ukraine, as well as the intervention of Austrian authorities, caused the movement to be replaced by Ukrainophilia, which would then cross over into the Russian Empire. With the start of World War I, all those supporting Russia were rounded up by Austrian forces and held in a concentration camp at Talerhof where many died. 
Modern History Taras Shevchenko Self-Portrait, 1847-17th and 18th Century Ukraine Ukraine emerges as the concept of a nation, and the Ukrainians as a nationality, with the Ukrainian national revival in the mid-18th century, in the wake of the peasant revolt of 1768-69ths and the eventual partition of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Galicia fell to the Austrian Empire, and the rest of Ukraine to the Russian Empire. While right bank Ukraine belonged to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth until late 1793, left bank Ukraine had been incorporated into Tsardom of Russia in 1667. Under the Treaty of Andrasovo, in 1672, Podolia was occupied by the Turkish Ottoman Empire, while Kiev and Bratislav came under the control of Hetman Petro Doroshenko until 1681, when they were also captured by the Turks but in 1699 the Treaty of Karlowitz returned those lands to the Commonwealth. Most of Ukraine fell to the Russian Empire under the reign of Catherine the Great, in 1793 right bank Ukraine was annexed by Russia in the second partition of Poland. Ukrainian writers and intellectuals were inspired by the nationalistic spirit stirring other European peoples existing under other imperial governments. Russia, fearing separatism, imposed strict limits on attempts to elevate the Ukrainian language and culture, even banning its use in study. The Russophile policies of Russification and Panslavism led to an exodus of a number some Ukrainian intellectuals into Western Ukraine, while others embraced a Pan-Slavic or Russian identity. Ukraine and the World Wars Ukrainian People's Republic poster during Ukrainian War of Independence, 1918. Our enemies will vanish like dew in the sun. We too shall rule in our country. Ukraine according to an old postcard from 1919. Main Articles. Ukrainian People's Republic, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, and Soviet Occupation of Ukraine Further Information. Ukraine in World War I. Ukraine after the Russian Revolution, and Ukrainian War of Independence. Further information. Soviet-Ukrainian War, Polish-Ukrainian War, and Collectivization in the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic Further information. Operation Vistula Further information. Modern History of Ukraine. Territorial Evolution of the Ukrainian SSR 1922-1954. Okrug Taganrog and Shakti lost, 1924. Polish Volhynia gained, 1939, Transnistria lost, 1940, Transcarpatia gained, 1945, Romanian Islands gained, 1948, Crimea gained, 1954. Depopulation in 1929-1933, including Holodomor time Ukraine, which included Crimea, the Kuban, and portions of Don Cossack lands with large Ukrainian populations, along with ethnic Russians, and Jews, tried to break free from Russia after the February 1917 revolution in St. Petersburg, historian Paul Kubitschek states. Between 1917 and 1920, several entities that aspired to be independent Ukrainian states came into existence. This period, however, was extremely chaotic, characterized by revolution, international and civil war, and lack of strong central authority. Many factions competed for power in the area that is today's Ukraine, and not all groups desired a separate Ukrainian state. Ultimately, Ukrainian independence was short-lived, as most Ukrainian lands were incorporated into the Soviet Union and the remainder, in western Ukraine, was divided among Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Romania. Canadian scholar Orest Subtelny provides a context from the long span of European history, in 1919 total chaos engulfed Ukraine. Indeed, in the modern history of Europe no country experienced such complete anarchy, bitter civil strife, and total collapse of authority as did Ukraine at this time. Six different armies, those of the Ukrainians, the Bolsheviks, the Whites, the Entente, French, the Poles and the Anarchists, operated on its territory. Kyiv changed hands five times in less than a year. Cities and regions were cut off from each other by the numerous fronts. Communications with the outside world broke down almost completely. The starving cities emptied as people moved into the countryside in their search for food. The Ukrainian War of Independence of 1917-1921 produced the Free Territory of Ukraine, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, in 1919 merged from the Ukrainian People's Republic and West Ukrainian People's Republic, which was quickly subsumed in the Soviet Union. 
The Soviet famine of 1932-33, now known as the Holodomor, left millions dead in the Soviet Union, the majority of them Ukrainians not only in Ukraine but also in Kuban and former Don Cossack lands. The Second World War began in September 1939, when Hitler and Stalin invaded Poland, the Soviet Union taking most of eastern Poland. Nazi Germany with its allies invaded the Soviet Union in 1941. Some Ukrainians initially regarded the Wehrmacht soldiers as liberators from Soviet rule, while others formed a partisan movement. Some elements of the Ukrainian nationalist underground formed a Ukrainian insurgent army that fought both Soviet forces and the Nazi. Others collaborated with the Germans. Some 1.5 million Jews were murdered by the Nazis during their occupation. In Volhynia, Ukrainian fighters committed a massacre against up to 100,000 Polish civilians. Residual small groups of the UPA partisans acted near the Polish and Soviet border as long as to the 1950s. Galicia, South Bessarabia, Northern Bukovina, and Carpathian Ruthenia were added as a result of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact in 1939 and the Soviet victory over Germany in the Second World War, 1939-45. After World War II some amendments to the constitution of the Ukrainian SSR were accepted, which allowed it to act as a separate subject of international law in some cases and to a certain extent, remaining a part of the Soviet Union at the same time. In particular, these amendments allowed the Ukrainian SSR to become one of founding members of the United Nations UN together with the Soviet Union and the Bioworking SSR. This was part of a deal with the United States to ensure a degree of balance in the General Assembly, which the USSR opined was unbalanced in favor of the Western Bloc. In this capacity as a member of the UN, the Ukrainian SSR was an elected member of the United Nations Security Council in 1944. Independence Ukrainian President Leonid Kravchuk and President of the Russian Federation Boris Yeltsin signed the Beloveza Accords, dissolving the Soviet Union, the 8th of December 1991 Further Information, Declaration of Independence of Ukraine and Leonid Kuchma. Further Information, Yulia Timoshenko, Viktor Yushchenko, Viktor Yanukovych, Orange Revolution, and Kharkiv Pact Further Information, Russian-Ukrainian Relations, Ukrainian-EU Relations, Euromaidan, 2014 Ukrainian Revolution, and Annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation. The Coat of Arms of Ukraine, adopted 19 February 1992, show the Trizub or Trident, a design proposed in 1917 by Mikhailo Hrushevsky for the Ukrainian People's Republic, ultimately based on a symbol stamped on Kievan coins by Vladimir the Great. The blue and yellow flag of Ukraine was introduced on 28 January 1992, based on a flag used in the Ukrainian War of Independence in 1917-18. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Ukraine became an independent state, formalized with a referendum in December 1991. On 21 January 1990, over 300,000 Ukrainians organized a human chain for Ukrainian independence between Kyiv and Lviv. Ukraine officially declared itself an independent country on 24 August 1991, when the Communist Supreme Soviet Parliament of Ukraine proclaimed that Ukraine would no longer follow the laws of USSR and only the laws of the Ukrainian SSR, de facto declaring Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union. On 1 December, voters approved a referendum formalizing independence from the Soviet Union, over 90% of Ukrainian citizens voted for independence, with majorities in every region, including 56% in Crimea. The Soviet Union formally ceased to exist on 26 December, when the presidents of Ukraine, Belarus and Russia, the founding members of the USSR, met in Bialoiza Forest to formally dissolve the Union in accordance with the Soviet Constitution. With this Ukraine's independence was formalized de jure and recognized by the international community. Also, on 1 December 1991 Ukrainian voters' first presidential election elected Leonid Kravchuk. During his presidency the Ukrainian economy shrank by more than 10% per year, in 1994 by more than 20%. The presidency, 1994-2005, of the second president of Ukraine Leonid Kuchma was surrounded by numerous corruption scandals and the lessening of media freedoms, including the cassette scandal. During Kuchma's presidency, the economy recovered, with GDP growth at around 10% a year in his last years in office. In 2004, Kuchma announced that he would not run for re-election, 
two major candidates emerged in the 2004 presidential election. Viktor Yanukovych, the incumbent prime minister, supported by both Kuchma and by the Russian Federation, wanted closer ties with Russia. The main opposition candidate, Viktor Yushchenko, called for Ukraine to turn its attention westward and aim to eventually join the EU. In the runoff election, Yanukovych officially won by a narrow margin, but Yushchenko and his supporters alleged that vote-rigging and intimidation cost him many votes, especially in eastern Ukraine. A political crisis erupted after the opposition started massive street protests in Kyiv and other cities, Orange Revolution, and the Supreme Court of Ukraine ordered the election results null and void. A second runoff found Viktor Yushchenko the winner. Five days later, Yanukovych resigned from office and his cabinet was dismissed on 5 January 2005. During the Yushchenko term, relations between Russia and Ukraine often appeared strained as Yushchenko looked towards improved relations with the European Union and less toward Russia. In 2005, a highly publicized dispute over natural gas prices with Russia caused shortages in many European countries that were reliant on Ukraine as a transit country. A compromise was reached in January 2006. By the time of the presidential election of 2010, Yushchenko and Yulia Tymoshenko, allies during the Orange Revolution, had become bitter enemies. Tymoshenko ran for president against both Yushchenko and Viktor Yanukovych, creating a three-way race. Yushchenko, whose popularity had plummeted, persisted in running, and many pro-Orange voters stayed home. In the second round of the election Yanukovych won the runoff ballot with 48% to Tymoshenko's 45%. During his presidency, 2010-2014, Yanukovych and his party of regions were accused of trying to create a controlled democracy in Ukraine and of trying to destroy the main opposition party bloc Yulia Tymoshenko, but both have denied these charges. One frequently cited example of Yanukovych's attempts to centralize power was the 2011 sentencing of Yulia Tymoshenko, which has been condemned by Western governments as potentially being politically motivated. 2014 Euromaidan protests in Kyiv in November 2013, President Yanukovych did not sign the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement and instead pursued closer ties with Russia. This move sparked protests on the streets of Kyiv and, ultimately, the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. Protesters set up camps in Kiev's Maidan Nizaliznosti, Independence Square, and in December 2013 and January 2014 protesters started taking over various government buildings, first in Kyiv and, later, in western Ukraine. Battles between protesters and police resulted in about 80 deaths in February 2014. Following the violence the Ukrainian parliament on the 22nd of February voted to remove Yanukovych from power, on the grounds that his whereabouts were unknown and he thus could not fulfill his duties, and to free Yulia Tymoshenko from prison. The same day Yanukovych supporter Volodymyr Rybak resigned as Speaker of the Parliament, and was replaced by Tymoshenko loyalist Alexander Turkunov, who was subsequently installed as interim president. Yanukovych had fled Kyiv, and subsequently gave a press conference in the Russian city of Rostov-on-Don. In March 2014, the annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation occurred. Though official results of a referendum on reunification with Russia were reported as showing a large majority in favor of the proposition, the vote was organized under Russian military occupation and was denounced by the European Union and the United States as illegal. War in the separatists claimed nearly 90% voted in favor of independence. Later in April 2014, fighting between the Ukrainian army and pro-Ukrainian volunteer battalions on one side, and forces supporting the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics on the other side, escalated into the war in Donbass. By December 2014 more than 6,400 people had died in this conflict and according to United Nations figures it led to over half a million people becoming internally displaced within Ukraine and 200,000 refugees to flee to mostly Russia and other neighboring countries. During the same period, political, including adoption of the law on lustration and the law on decommunization, an economic reform started. On 25 May 2014, Petro Poroshenko was elected president in the first round of the presidential election. 
By the second half of 2015 independent observers noted that reforms in Ukraine had considerably slowed down, corruption did not subside, and the economy of Ukraine was still in a deep crisis. By December 2015, more than 9,100 people had died, largely civilians, in the war in Donbass, according to United Nations figures. On 1 January 2016, Ukraine joined the DCFTA with the EU. Ukrainian citizens were granted visa-free travel to the Schengen area for up to 90 days during any 180-day period on the 11th of June 2017 and the association agreement formally came into effect on 1 September 2017. Significant achievements in the foreign policy arena, support for anti-Russian sanctions, obtaining a visa-free regime with the countries of the European Union, combined with the need to overcome extremely difficult tasks within the country. The old local authorities also did not want any changes, the authorities were cleansed of anti-maiden activists, lustration, but in part. The fight against corruption was launched, limited to sentences of petty officials in electronic declarations, and the newly established NABU and NAPC were marked by scandals in their work. Judicial reform was combined with the appointment of old, compromised judges. The investigation of crimes against maiden residents was delayed. In order to counteract the massive global Russian anti-Ukrainian propaganda in the information war, the Ministry of Information Policy was created, which for five years, except for the ban on Kaspersky Lab, Dr. Webb, 1S, Mail, Ru, Yandex and Russian social networks v Contacta or Odnoklastniki and propaganda media, did not show effective work. In 2017, the president signed the law, on education, which met with opposition from national minorities and quarreled with the government of Hungary. On May 19, 2018, Poroshenko signed a decree, which put into effect the decision of the National Security and Defense Council on the final termination of Ukraine's participation in the statutory bodies of the Commonwealth of Independent States. As of February 2019, Ukraine has minimized its participation in the Commonwealth of Independent States to a critical minimum and has effectively completed its withdrawal. The Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine did not ratify the accession, i.e. Ukraine has never been a member of the CIS. Kerch Strait incident occurred on 25 November 2018 when the Russian Federal Security Service FSB, Coast Guard fired upon and captured three Ukrainian Navy vessels attempting to pass from the Black Sea into the Sea of Azov through the Kerch Strait on their way to the port of Mariupol. On January 6, 2019, in Fener, a delegation of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine with the participation of President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko received a tomos on autocephaly. The Tomos was presented to the head of the OCU, Metropolitan Epiphanius, during a joint liturgy with the Ecumenical Patriarch. The next day, Tomos was brought to Ukraine for a demonstration at St. Sophia Cathedral. On January 9, all members of the Synod of the Constantinople Orthodox Church signed the Tomos during the scheduled meeting of the Synod. On February 21, 2019, the Constitution of Ukraine was amended, the norms on the strategic course of Ukraine for membership in the European Union and NATO are enshrined in the preamble of the Basic Law, three articles and transitional provisions. On 21 April 2019, Volodymyr Zelensky was elected president in the second round of the presidential election. Early parliamentary elections on July 21 allowed the newly formed pro-presidential Servant of the People Party to win an absolute majority of seats for the first time in the history of independent Ukraine, 248. Dmitro Razumkov, the party's chairman, was elected Speaker of Parliament. The majority was able to form a government on August 29 on its own, without forming coalitions, and approve Alexei Honchurik as Prime Minister. On March 4, 2020, Due to a 1.5% drop in GDP, instead of a 4.5% increase at the time of the election, the Verkhovna Rada fired Honcharuk's government and Denis Shmyl became the new prime minister. On July 28, 2020, in Lublin, Lithuania, Poland and Ukraine created the Lublin Triangle Initiative, which aims to create further cooperation between the three historical countries of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and further Ukraine's integration and accession to the EU and NATO. On February 2, 2021, a presidential decree banned the television broadcasting of the pro-Russian TV channels 112 Ukraine, News 1 and ZIK. 
The decision of the National Security and Defense Council and the presidential decree of February 19, 2021 imposed sanctions on eight individuals and 19 legal entities, including Putin's pro-Russian politician and Putin-s godfather Viktor Medvedchuk and his wife Oksana Marchenko. At the June 2021 Brussels summit, NATO leaders reiterated the decision taken at the 2008 Bucharest summit that Ukraine would become a member of the alliance with the Membership Action Plan (MAP) as an integral part of the process and Ukraine's right to determine its own future and foreign policy without outside interference. On May 17, 2021, the association trio was formed by signing a joint memorandum between the foreign ministers of Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine. Association trio is tripartite format for the enhanced cooperation, coordination, and dialogue between the three countries that have signed the association agreement with the EU, with the European Union on issues of common interest related to European integration, enhancing cooperation within the framework of the Eastern Partnership, and committing to the prospect of joining the European Union. As of 2021, Ukraine is preparing to formally apply for EU membership in 2024, in order to join the European Union in the 2030s. National Historiography Further Information Ukrainian National Revival Ukrainian Nationalism Ukrainophilia, Russophilia, All-Russian Nation, and Pan-Slavism. The scholarly study of Ukraine's history emerged from romantic impulses in the late 19th century. The outstanding leaders were Volodymyr Antonovich, 1834-1908, based in Kyiv, and his student Mikhailo Hrushevsky, 1866-1934. For the first time full-scale scholarly studies based on archival sources, modern research techniques, and modern historical theories became possible. However, the demands of government officials, Tsarist, to a lesser degree Austro-Hungarian and Polish, and later Soviet, made it difficult to disseminate ideas that ran counter to the central government, Therefore, exile schools of historians emerged in Central Europe and Canada after 1920. Citation needed. Strikingly different interpretations of the medieval state of Kievan Rus appear in the four schools of historiography within Ukraine. Russophile, Sovietophile, Eastern Slavic, and Ukrainophile. The Russophile and Sovietophile schools have become marginalized in independent Ukraine, with the Ukrainophile school being dominant in the early 21st century. The Ukrainophile school promotes an identity that is mutually exclusive of Russia. It has come to dominate the nation's educational system, security forces, and national symbols and monuments, although it has been dismissed as nationalist by Western historians. The East Slavic school, an eclectic compromise between Ukrainophiles and Russophilism, has a weaker ideological and symbolic base, although it is preferred by Ukraine's centrist former elites. Many historians in recent years have sought alternatives to national histories, and Ukrainian history invited approaches that looked beyond a national paradigm. Multi-ethnic history recognizes the numerous peoples in Ukraine. Transnational history portrays Ukraine as a border zone for various empires. An area studies categorizes Ukraine as part of East Central Europe or, less often, as part of Eurasia. Serhii Plaki argues that looking beyond the country's national history has made possible a richer understanding of Ukraine, its people, and the surrounding regions. After 1991, historical memory was a powerful tool in the political mobilization and legitimation of the post-Soviet Ukrainian state, as well as the division of selectively used memory along the lines of the political division of Ukrainian society. Ukraine did not experience the restorationist paradigm typical of some other post-Soviet nations, including the Baltic states, although the multifaceted history of independence, the Orthodox Church in Ukraine, Soviet-era repressions, mass famine, and World War II collaboration were used to provide a different constitutive frame for developing Ukrainian nationhood. The politics of identity, which includes the production of history textbooks and the authorization of commemorative practices, has remained fragmented and tailored to reflect the ideological anxieties and concerns of individual regions of Ukraine. Canadian historiography on Ukraine and Soviet Ukraine, 20th century historians were strictly limited in the range of models and topics they could cover, with Moscow insisting on an official Marxist approach. However émigré Ukrainians in Canada developed an independent scholarship that ignored Marxism, and shared the Western tendencies in historiography.
George W. Simpson and Orest Subtelny were leaders promoting Ukrainian studies in Canadian academe. The lack of independence in Ukraine meant that traditional historiographical emphases on diplomacy and politics were handicapped. The flourishing of social history after 1960 opened many new approaches for researchers in Canada. Subtelny used the modernization model. Later historiographical trends were quickly adapted to the Ukrainian evidence, with special focus on Ukrainian nationalism. The new cultural history, post-colonial studies, and the linguistic turn, augmenting, if not replacing social history, allowed for multiple angles of approach. By 1991, historians in Canada had freely explored a wide range of approaches regarding the emergence of a national identity. After independence, a high priority in Canada was assisting in the freeing of Ukrainian scholarship from Soviet Marxist orthodoxy, which downplayed Ukrainian nationalism and insisted that true Ukrainians were always trying to reunite with Russia. Independence from Moscow meant freedom from an orthodoxy that was never well suited to Ukrainian developments. Scholars in Ukraine welcomed the national paradigm that Canadian historians had helped develop. Since 1991, the study of Ukrainian nation building became an increasingly global and collaborative enterprise, with scholars from Ukraine studying and working in Canada, and with conferences on related topics attracting scholars from around the world.